Welcome to Tegematics. I've been away for some time now, but I'm back. In this video, we're focusing on chemistry. Over time, we've been doing mathematics. This is my very first chemistry video and it promises to be interesting. Here comes a big question. What is chemistry? Chemistry is a branch of pure science which deals with the structure, the composition, and the properties of matter. I'll come again. A branch of pure science which deals with the structure, the composition, and the properties of matter. Now, look at it. If chemistry deals with the structure, composition, and properties of matter, it means that matter is a very important word in chemistry. So in this very first video of mine in chemistry, we are focusing on matter and we are starting right away. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. I'll come again. Anything that has mass and occupies space is matter. You know, I've, I've come across some students who define matter as anything that has weight and occupies space. I mean, this brings a kind of confusion. Are we not going to say that matter is anything that has mass? Or are we going to say that matter is anything that has weight? We need to clarify this. To do this, let's just take a little tour. Let's look at the difference between mass of a body and the weight of a body. If we can clarify between these two or distinguish between them, then we get the actual definition of matter. Now, the mass of a body is the measure of the amount of matter contained in the body. I'll come again. The measure of the amount of matter contained in a body is the mass of a body. But the weight of a body is the measure of the amount of force exerted on the body by gravity. The measure of the amount of force exerted on the body by what? By gravity. That is the weight of a body. Now, here it is. The, the thing about mass is, since mass is, uh, is containing the amount of matter in the body, mass is independent of location. In other words, anywhere you find yourself, the mass of a body remains the mass of a body. If you go to the moon or space, the mass of a body remains the mass of a body. If you go to the United States or you travel to South Africa or you decide to travel to Australia, wherever you find yourself, the mass of a body is constant anywhere in the world. All over the universe, the mass of a body is constant. Here comes the thing about weight. The weight of a body depends on location because acceleration due to gravity changes with location. What it means is that when you move from one location to another location, the weight of a body can change. Okay, let me, let me give you this video. Look at this video. Just take a look at this video. This is an astronaut in space. This astronaut is not on Earth, it's in what? It's in space. Despite all the, all the load, the weight on him, all the things he puts on his body, the astronaut is still floating in space is weightless in space. But I tell you, if you bring this astronaut from space, bring him to the Earth, he cannot float. Why? Because there is a gravitational pull on him that brings him back. Okay, let me... Okay, I think I have this. This is a face mask. We put on this face mask, you know, because of the season we find ourselves, the period, the pandemic, the COVID-19 coronavirus thing. So we wear this face mask. Now this face mask, if I throw it up, it's going to come down. So the face mask is definitely going to come down if I throw it up. Why? Because there is a force that is bringing it down. 
if I take this same face mask to the space, if I throw it up, it's going to remain up. It's not going to come down. Why is it not coming down? Because in space, it is what? It is weightless. So we can't say that a matter is something that has weight because a definition of a thing should remain the definition of that thing irrespective of location, wherever it is. So if we take this face mask now and put it in space, it's going to work. It's going to float. It's not going to come down. But the real thing is that this face mask has a matter containing its body. It has a mass. In moon, the mass is the same. Anywhere you go to, the mass is the same. So we could say that matter is anything that has mass and occupy space. No more confusion. Now, there are three parameters very important to be discussed under the topic matter. What are these parameters? The state of matter, the properties of matter, and the classification of matter. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to focus on the state of matter. State of matter. There are three states of matter. We have solid, liquid, and gas. So we have solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. Let us examine the properties of these various states of matter by comparing them. The first one, let's look at the first one. Solid are tightly packed together. I mean, tightly fixed together. So there are no free space in between them. If you look at liquid, the particles of liquid are loosely held together, loosely held together and gases are more loosely held together. Let's look at another property, the shape and the volume. Solid has definite shape and solid has definite volume. Liquid has no definite shape, liquid has a definite volume. And gases has no definite shape and no definite volume. Let me explain further. If you look at the shape of solid, it can easily be identified, be it rectangular, circular, square, or irregular. So solid has a definite shape, and the volume can be measured. But the shape of a liquid is not known until a liquid is poured in a container. If you pour liquid in a circular container, it assumes a circular shape. If you pour it in a rectangular container, it assumes a rectangular shape, and so on. But gases, irrespective of the container you put a gas, the gas will fill the whole of the container. It will fill it. So you, you, you can't even measure the volume. Neither can you identify the shape. So let's talk about another properties of these three states of matter. And that property is called compression. You cannot compress a solid. You cannot compress a liquid. But gases can be what? Compressed. Why? Since they fill the whole of their container, you can easily what? Compress them by reducing them to a smaller size. Another thing we need to understand is their movement. Solid cannot move from one place to another. Why? Because they are tightly packed together, so they can't move. The only thing that a solid can do is that a solid can vibrate within its fixed position. Liquid, however, can move from one place to another. But the movement of liquid is limited or restricted. Why? Because the particles are loosely held, but not more loosely, unlike gases. Gases can move without any limitation. They can go anywhere. The moment gases are exposed, they start moving everywhere. So another property we can consider is their kinetic energy. Of the three states of matter, solid has the lowest kinetic energy, liquid, the kinetic energy is intermediate, that is, it is greater than that of solid, but uh, lower compared to that of gas, it is lesser compared to that of gas. If you look at gases, gases have the highest kinetic energy ever. So, there are other properties that you could examine, and uh, if you have other properties, you can drop them in the comment section below. I would love to interact with them when I see your other properties. So, now we move to another important aspect of the three states of matter, and that is called 
change of state. The three states of matter are interconvertible. In other words, they can change from one state to another. A liquid can change to solid, and that same liquid can change to gas. Solid can change to gas, gas can change to liquid. So change of, change of state is all about the transformation that happens when a particular state of matter changes to another state. Now let's discuss this change of state. I would love to use water to explain the change of state. Why am I using water? Water is an example of matter that, um, that can exist in the three states of matter. Water will exist in the solid state, that is ice. Water will exist as water, that is in the liquid state. And water will exist as steam of, or, or vapor, that is the gaseous state. So, let's see how this can happen. When a solid changes to liquid, the process is called melting. Very easy, as you can see. And when a liquid is changing back to solid, the process is called freezing. You know, just like if ice is turning to water, the ice is melting. And when the water is turning back to the ice, it is undergoing what is called freezing. Now, let me explain another one, another change of state. When a liquid is changing into gas, the process is called vaporization. And when gas is turning back to the liquid, the process is called condensation. How do I explain this? Okay, when you are boiling water, you notice that at a point, you begin to see vapor coming out of the water. That is a process of vaporization. The liquid, which is the water, has turned to gas. And in terms of condensation, if you boil water in a closed container, for instance, after some time, if the water cools, by the time you open the container, you notice some droplet of water on the surface of what? Of the cover of the container. What does that tell you? That tells you that the vapor, some of the vapor that we are trying to, what, to escape from the container couldn't escape. They hit the surface of the container, which was cooler, and turned back to the liquid. So that process is called condensation. Now let me give you another one. When a solid turns to gas without passing through the liquid state, the process is called sublimation. Very easy. A solid turning to gas without passing through the liquid state is called sublimation. But when gas turns back to solid without passing through the liquid state, the process is called deposition. In other words, this is very easy. You can just use a triangle to explain it. You can just have a triangle like this where you have solid, liquid, and gas. If you check the arrow from solid to liquid, that is melting. Liquid back to solid is freezing. From solid to gas, that is sublimation. And gas coming back to solid, that is deposition. And if you move from liquid, to gas that is vaporization and from gas back to liquid that is condensation before i wrap up this uh this lesson i would like to explain the another state of matter there's another state of matter that is not often discussed i'm not discussing it in this video i'm going to dedicate another video for it now that state of matter is called the plasma state it's a fourth state of matter. After the solid, the liquid, and the gas, there is another state that is called the plasma state. A good example of that state is um, lightning. Lightning. When you say lightning, lightning is a plasma state of matter. As a matter of fact, the plasma television is able to function because of the plasma state of matter. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned something and you find it impactful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. Share the video and give your comments on all the information you have on matter. Let us 
relate with this information. I'll see you in my next video.